Hello Kitty. Tara and her magical grumpy cat. Yeah. Miracle, the grumpiest cat in the world. Well, actually, no, there is one of those. <laughs> and it's got like a trademark and a copyright and everything, so you can't Whatever. Really... <laughs> that cat doesn't even look that grumpy most of the time. Have you heard of Angry Pearl? Angry Pearl is the newest grumpy cat on the grumpy cat scene. <laughs> There's a scene? Apparently, this is a thing. Um... So she's on Instagram. Instagram is Angry Pearl. And she's gorgeous. She's like a long-haired, white, and orange kitty. And she has the most serious resting bitch face. Like, her eyes are literally shaped this way. So she just always looks pissed off. But she's so pretty. She's a little sweetie. I mean, she's not my little sweetie. Why? Why are you waking me up? My internet. She always looks so dazed. Yeah, well, she likes to sleep. Well, of course she does. She's a cat. Well, I'm old. I'm old. That's no excuse. She's a cat. Nobody ever lets me sleep around here. They're always jamming Q-tips in my ears and stuff like that. <laughs> right, baby? And so in response, I slash my owner's face. Not mine. <laughs> it's kind of like what uh, what Mel Brooks once said. Um, comedy is when you fall into an open manhole uh, and die. Tragedy is when I get a paper cut. Yeah. So, Pretty much like I'm good cop and Dan's bad cop because even if I do a bad thing, she blames Dan. <laughs> like... Even if I clean her ears, she glares at Dan and gets mad at him for it. Like, you somehow, made this happen. Right. Somehow it's his fault. So poor Dan gets to be bad cop. And... You brought this red devil into my home. No, but then she like comes to me and loves on me. <sighs> even though I did the bad thing. And it's all Dan's fault somehow. It's the best of both worlds there. Yeah. All right. So shall we get this underway? Let's. Let's. Do it. How sad is that David Bowie would do? I know, I know. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call oh, What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this week, oh, we're starting off classy this week, Tara. Um, I've noticed. Because she's sitting here chewing on her butt, so that's perfect. I've noticed a trend. I, I, I've noticed there is a trend of late. Strangely, we're moving away from horrible shit happening in Walmart to horrible shit happening in Target. We're upgrading. I, is this like an upward mobility thing? Is this a sign the economy is recovering, perhaps? Uh, sure. What's right above Target? Where is it going to hit next? I, I don't know. It'd be Macy's. Macy's. We'll have this shit popping up in Macy's. Yeah. Well, um... Sears. Sears is probably more in between Target and Macy's. This is definitely one of those when this happened, the guys, they were probably looking at, at the guy who did this and were like, are you sure you're in the right place? Because Walmart's just across the street. Are you sure you belong here? Oh, this... Man accused of urinating on store merchandise oh. turns self into police. It's not just that, though. It's, it's, it's bigger than that. Wilkes-Barre Township, a Stroudsburg man caught on surveillance urinating on merchandise in the Target store has turned himself into the police. And Yal uh, Mukanovic, I think I said that right, was, so. was charged with open lewdness Oh, get off the screen. Get off the screen. Not you. Um, uh, open lewdness, public drunkenness, and disorderly conduct. Please say Mukovic, uh, Mukan, Mukanovic, Mukanovic, I can say this, entered the store at 8.50 p.m., drove an electric cart for the handicapped around the store, stopping in the electronics aisle. Police then said he took off his urine-soaked pants, so he came in already covered in urine, exposed himself, 
and urinate on the video games. Look, I was a little disappointed with Fallout 4 as well. But... Target, pretty much every Target I've ever been to, the bathrooms are right up at the front of the store. Right near the entrance. <laughs> you don't have to look too hard. They're right there. Great big sign. The bathroom's right here. So now you have a bunch of unsellable video games. Like, I don't care that they're... Well, you say that! They've been wrapped in... They've been peed on. You That's say it. that! I've worked retail. Once you're getting involved in bodily fluids, it's considered a biohazard. I'm pretty sure there are some gamers dumpster diving for this shit at this point. Probably, though. but Probably. they can't sell it. They can't sell it, no. Because it's considered a biohazard. It's playable, but they have to damage it out. And now some poor minimum wage slave has to sanitize that fucking handy cart. And the he pissed on the accessories, too. Do you know how big a deal the Nintendo Amiibos are? I don't even know what a Nintendo Amiibo is. Whoa. I you With your nephew? Doesn't even... Wow. My nephew has a Wii. He just got an Xbox One which Dan had to set up for him. That's how we spent half a Christmas day. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. He doesn't have a Nintendo anything. All right. The Amiibo is this little plastic figure that's got a radio frequency identification chip in it. And you can put it near your Wii, or I think it's the Wii U, and it will register the character in the game, and you get, like, special features and unlocks and all for having oh, these. so it's like, wait, okay. He has Disney Infinity. Kind of like that. Yeah, it's kind of like And the characters are collectible and ridiculously rare, and you have grown-ass men driving from store to store trying to find the super rare Amiibos. So I can see them at the out back at the dumpster going, well, a guy peed on it, but... But it's a Charizard. It's Charizard. I don't, I don't know them. if there's a Charizard. There's Charizard. Okay. There's a chart. I don't have him It's yet. one of, like, the five Pokemon I know, but I don't know if there's a Pokemon game. I, I play Rock Band. <laughs> okay, Adam Crow to Major Tom in the, in the channel says, of course it's the Wii U. Really? Really? <laughs> You're going to? No, it wasn't the Wii U. It was the Wii Them. Yeah. Is how is how that worked. Actually, no, it was the Wii U and Them. I've never been this drunk. <laughs> Like, this was planned out, like, maybe not planned in advance, but, like, he purposely went into a Target, got on a cart, went to a particular department, mm -hmm. peed on the stuff, and then left. And left. Like, didn't stop at the little Target Starbucks. Nope. And I'm impressed that he walked out of Target without buying anything, because I've never gotten out of Target for less than $100. <laughs> You go in for one thing and you buy 62 things, none of which are the thing you went in for. It's like a perfect trap of capitalism. Really? Because I can go into the Target and buy the one thing and come right back out again. No, I, I have never gotten out of Target for less than 100 bucks. I find so much crap in there that I don't really need. Uh, we have more from our continuing coverage on people putting shit in their pants and trying to steal it. And I swear to God, they keep trying to up the ante on us. We've had meat, lobsters, chainsaws, AK-47s. And if we add in smuggling, we also have live turtles, live hummingbirds, and live snakes. We're in that last one again, although this one, this guy is brazen as fuck. Thief steals python! Oh, we had a Pomeranian once. Pomeranian, yeah. A guy shoved a live Pomeranian down his pants to steal it. Portland, Oregon, a thief was caught on video, and I think we have the video here. Let's see if, if they'll show oh, us the video. Oh, well, it's Portland. He wasn't trying to steal it. He just wanted to... Do we have the video? No, that's an ad. That's not the video. It's Metro PCS. You liars. You lying liars. And he was just concerned that the Python might be lonely and need an alignment of his little Python chakras. 
The man walked into A to Z Pets, grabbed the snake out of his cage, shoved it down the front of his pants before casually walking out of the store. Store owner realized the snake was gone. She checked the surveillance video and saw what happened. Now the search is on to find the thief and the two-foot python, which is worth about $200. Forgive me for not knowing this. Are pythons biting snakes or constricting? Constricting. And the question is, which one is worse to have right next to your dick? <laughs> well. I mean, pick your poison. <laughs> Literally, I guess. Do you want your dick bitten into with venomous fangs or squeezed until it dies and falls off? That's like the worst game of Would You Rather Ever. Or one night on, on Tinder, honestly. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> Basically, don't put a giant snake down your, down your pants because that's that's the that's the Faustian choice you were setting up for yourself. Can you just imagine the snake looking around and be like, hey, hey, buddy! Hey, how'd you get in here? This guy just put... Wow, you are awfully small. I didn't... How do you unhinge that? How do you... I don't know where... I didn't know they came that small. Wow. He just really wanted to impress his date. <laughs> hey, baby. How you doing? Are your pants moving? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they are. It's got a mind of its own. <sighs> Literally. Just, it's... <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're, they're upset at me for asking that question, but I think it's valid. These are things you have to think about before you just shove wildlife down your pants. <laughs> you and your parts there. And there needs to be a, should you put this in your pants checklist? There really should be. Because, you know, we can't seem to stop them from doing it. It's like, it's like kids having sex. We can't seem to stop them from doing it. But maybe we can get them to do it safely. Yeah. I mean, probably not. Probably not. I mean, how do you steal things using your pants safely? There's a manhunt on right now for this guy. There's how what's the APB look like? Um All units be on the lookout for a man with a two foot snake in his pants. <laughs> Do we have to pat him down to find out? There's gonna be just a really annoying porn worker who gets picked up off the street. I wasn't doing nothing, man! I wasn't yeah. doing... Ron Jeremy? <laughs> Stay home for a few days. Shit, probably should. Sure. This next one... Oh, great! We have our asshole of the week. Um, this wasn't it? No, no. It's it gets... bad for that snake, too. It gets worse. Um, Do you know how the whole service dog thing works? <sighs> yes. You're already, I say service dog, you're just brace it for you. Like, oh, it's so I work bitch. retail, so I know how the real service dog thing works. And I know how the lady that used to come into my Sephora with a chihuahua that would bark its head off the whole time she was there, but she said it was a service dog, so we couldn't do anything about it thing works. Well, th with the real actual service dogs, they're not just, well, they're, they're pets in a sense, but yeah. they're functional. Yeah. They're trained, they're specially trained, and there are do's and don'ts when it comes mm -hmm. to them. One of them you wear a harness that says, please don't pet me. I am a service dog. Well, you know what? Reading is an important skill in life. Man I apparently have to carry paperwork, Jay Walker, but a lot of retail people aren't allowed to ask for it. It's not about the law, it's about we're not allowed to possibly offend you in any way. Even if you're not really a service dog, shit's on our floor. Man punches veteran for refusing to let daughter pet service dog. Oh my god. Manlius, New York. The man accused of punching a disabled army veteran in the face Monday morning at a Fayetteville Dunkin' Donuts 
turned himself into the police after co-workers told him they saw his picture on the news. Dominic Vidal, 21, of Syracuse, turned himself into police at 6 p.m. yesterday to claim responsibility after surveillance photos were released to the public when the alleged incident took place. Um, the incident with the veteran happened around 11.15 a.m. Monday when Manila's uh, police responded to a fight at Dunkin' Donuts. Police say the disabled veteran and his service dog were at the counter when a man confronted him about an issue regarding the dog. Police say Vidal told them he became angry with the victim and punched him twice in the face after he told his daughter she could not pet his dog since it was a service animal. He fled the scene shortly after. And here's the thing. Not only are you an asshole, because you are an asshole. You punch a disabled veteran in the face over something totally reasonable. You're an asshole. You're also an idiot because what you've taught your daughter now is that she has the right to touch any dog she wants, regardless of what their owner says. And the thing is, not all dogs like little kids. I mean, those dogs shouldn't be in a Dunkin' Donuts. But regardless, like, you have to teach your child to always ask someone if they can pet their dog. Ask if their dog is friendly. And if that person says no, it's probably for a reason. So good luck not let, having your daughter get her fucking fingers bitten off because you're a moron. This is this is kind of like the white trash version of Veruca Salt, isn't it? I don't know, because for all we know, the kid was fine. <laughs> no, Daddy, that's, that's okay. I For all we know, the kid was like, okay, sir, never mind, and then... His dad flipped the fuck out. No, 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 it's okay, Daddy. I don't want to pet the dog. You shut up! You want to let my daughter pet your dog? You think your dog's too good for my daughter? Huh? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? You looking at me? Is your dog looking at me? You looking at me? Dude, wind the fuck down. Yeah. And when he says, no, because he's a service dog, that means something. That means that dog is working. That dog... Is not there for everybody's pleasure. That dog is performing a function. He has to be alert. He can't get distracted. I mean, yeah, yeah, the, the, but now the bigger lesson is hmm. next time your kid encounters somebody, if they say no, don't pet the dog, it could be because this is a rescue dog that I took from a dog fighting pit and he doesn't know how to deal with people yet. Yeah. And your kid's going to lose a finger because you're an idiot. In life, Maybe five, six centuries ago, you could get anything you wanted if you hit someone else hard enough. Mm. That doesn't work anymore. That's not allowed. No. I mean, kind of sometimes it is in the right circumstance, but it shouldn't. You are not a monkey. Stop acting like a monkey. This is how monkeys get their way. They hit, unless they're a bonobo, a bonobo, then they fuck. But normally, monkeys hit. You're not a monkey! Stop acting like a monkey. You're not as cute as a monkey, either. I mean, I kind of enjoy that his name is Dominic, because there's that Christmas song, Dominic the Christmas Donkey, and he is a jackass. He is. Just a bit. Well, our, our next one, you know what? Sometimes I read these and I'm like, I'm not even mad. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not even mad. And this next one, it's like, maybe you shouldn't have ought to done it, but I'm not even mad. I'm kind of impressed here. Man posing as a Walmart employee sends away cashier, steals money from the register. Huh. Police say a man posing as a Walmart employee took over a cash register at a Fairfax County store and stole cash after checking out a customer. Oh, well. Thanks. <laughs> the man who was wearing a Walmart employee, vents, uh, employee vest entered the store, told a cashier that he was needed in the office. The man took over the register and checked out a customer before stealing an undisclosed amount of cash. He then left the store and drove away at a silver Honda. Actually, that was probably just by necessity because most cash drawers now won't open unless you take a cash transaction. Ah. Uh, 
like you can't just open them now that they're computerized you probably can't just no sale it and open it that's so it's, you probably had to ring somebody out but that's still that they just he got someone paying cash i mean who pays cash anymore the balls on this guy I mean, the, the, the balls are, this is, I can't even be mad. Because this kind of worked. They still ain't caught him yet. Yeah, I mean, that's enterprising. Where did he get the vest? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Did they let you keep those? Because some places let you keep those after you leave. May so... Maybe eBay. Maybe. Maybe he just eBay a vet, a Walmart vest, and this act. Yeah, he knows somebody who works at Walmart and borrowed the vest. Although maybe we should be kind of happy that he's 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 kind of confined himself to mediocrity on this one. Maybe because this guy is kind of cunning. Imagine if he actually scaled up the plan to something bigger. Like the bank. Like a bank or something. I also love the Walmart cashier without questioning it. Some guy comes up in a Walmart vest and says, yeah, you're needed in the office. And the dude's like, oh, okay. Someone you don't recognize. But Walmart's probably a big enough store that there are people working there that you don't ever interact with. This this is why... And probably your average department store is the same way, where there are so many employees that you don't interact with everybody that works there. This is one of those where you have to, if Walmart paid their employees enough to give a shit, this probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah. This is one of those retail things where if you don't pay someone enough to give a shit, they will not give a shit. It's true. They There's just only so much, so many fucks that can be given for eight seventy five an hour. They, yeah, they they will not. No shit but will be given. Customers don't always get that because they're like, oh, just come on, do me a favor, and it's like, why would I do you a favor? I'm not paid enough to do you a favor. No, I'm not paid enough to do anything but survive my shift. Yeah, pretty much. You work here. I've never seen you before. Don't give a shit. Have at it. I'm going to the office. You work here. Cool. I don't care. What's sad is, though, this dude probably is going to get fired or reprimanded over it. Yeah. He'll probably take the hit. When that, and that sucks. Like, I don't well, feel that, too bad about Walmart losing money, but... Well, then the, they're going to come down on that employee. This dude needs to recruit him, then. <laughs> they could be, like, the Walmart bandits. And just, you know, every store they do this at, they get another person, and then they recruit them. And then you've got an army. A Just, blue vested anarchist army. Yeah. We were, I think I'm putting way too much thought into this. Then you've got like Project Mayhem, but the really nonviolent version. Because someone, I forget who it was, they scrolled past, made a point. They, they, he found a way to rob a place without a single weapon or threat. I know. Like nobody got physically hurt. I think this employee has probably got screwed out of it, but. Yeah, but he did it with his brain. I'm, I'm, so you could start like a really weirdly benign Project Mayhem. I'm I'm having a hard time even being mad. I like I I'm mad for that employee. Yeah, he yeah. came down him on him over it because his drawer was probably short and he left it unattended, and that's gonna suck. He can have his revenge. He still has his vest, and now he knows that one secret. That Walmart managers hate. He can just pay it forward on the next poor schmuck. Um, so our next story comes from from the Daily Mail, and I almost never use the Daily Mail because, in terms of sourcing their stories, they are awful. However, they got video. Remember a few weeks ago? I believe it was a few weeks ago. We had that that one where the guy was using a lighter to look inside his gas tank. Yeah. And set it on fire. And you would think, God, how... Would you do that? That I can't believe anyone would be that stupid. No if one would... If nothing else, if nothing else, if you flunked science in high school, 
We all saw Zoolander, right? <laughs> are you dumber than the male models? You are. Actually, yeah, you are. Well, um, that having been said, this one comes to us via Russia. So this is not a this this is a spontaneous repro reproduction of earlier stupid in an entirely different country. Did you ever watch Fringe? Yes, of course I did. You got me to watch the whole thing. Oh, that's right. So the first season, it's all about the pattern, and the pattern is seemingly random, like weird occurrences around. We're we're getting into a pattern of. Stupid. Well, here you can see. I blame the large hadron. Oh, whoa, that's a lot of fire. Um, woman sets her car on fire after playing with a lighter while filling her car at the gas station. This our moment: a Russian woman set fire to her gas tank with a lighter while pouring more petrol in. One drop letter on YouTube shows the female driver trying to fill her frozen car with fuel at a petrol stop. The remote Siberian city of Surgit. After taking a look at the pump machine, the woman decides to use a lighter near her car's gas camp cap, apparently either trying to defrost it or check the fuel level. Oh no, we're watching that again. Cause yeah, just watch slow slow here. She's 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 filling, yeah, got got the got the, the gas tank all lined up. She's got that's that's a that's a flip zippo lighter. So she's she's uh, she understands the basic premise of oil burn, but no, oh there it goes. And the guy who's videotaping her at this point is like, "Fuck this shit, I'm out," because he immediately pulls away. And she just hangs out there. She's like, "Oh no, my car is turning into a giant fireball. I'm gonna try and pat it up. No, get away." She blows on it. If you watch in the video, she blows on the fire. That's really not going to help. Did we get it? I, I don't, I don't, what is, how do people, this is basic, Kim, this is basic shit, people. Not, not to change the subject, but I want to show you something. I, I've arranged, like, I've pulled Miracle's Tower closer and arranged the shot such that she can be in the shot. So look, look how fucking devoted she is. To, to avoiding the camera? She's now sitting farther back. <laughs> <laughs> she knows! She's now, like, comported herself at the very back of the tower just to be like, no, fuck you, you can't exploit me. Uh, You're a diva. <laughs> I'll get out of bed for less than ten thousand treats a day. Like she's all the way pushed back to the other side of the. Just tower. to be out of the slot shot. Yep. Uh, my God, how did how do you go through life without understanding the basic fire plus gas? Clean is flammable. Is boom, fire, gas, boom. Like I I I. Flunked chemistry, and I'm aware of that. Fire, gas, boo! Very simple! Very fucking simple! Uh, well, finally tonight... Light makes a good point. This is why New Jersey is an all-full-service state. <laughs> which is something I kind of dig, because I don't have to get out and pump my own gas, but uh, this is one of the reasons why, because people can't be fucking trusted. Trusted with fire, yeah. All right, our last story tonight, I had to stop and, and ask myself, were Dan and Tara in Michigan last week? Nobody can prove anything. Well, it, if not for the mugshot, I would have been like, wait a second, but there's a mugshot, so you guys are off the hook. Walmart engagement ends in sex toy arraignment. Hey, what, what are you trying to say about us? Michigan couples engagement, which took place at Walmart, ended up with the finance with the fiance in court for for an arraignment for stealing multiple items, including a sex toy. 
Police say 25-year-old William Cornelius Jr. proposed marriage to 20-year-old Sherry Moore at a Bay City Walmart store in front of employees and other shoppers who congratulated them. I would not get engaged at the Walmart. <laughs> you're gonna have to ask. Maybe you're gonna have to ask Dan if that was Plan A. You're gonna have to. If that was Plan A, we wouldn't be engaged. <laughs> so I'd be like, no. I'll think about it when you come up with something better than the Walmart. Walmart makes me anxious. But late, big and messy. I freaks me out. But later the same night. The couple was accused of shoplifting at a nearby store to taking items like, such as an edible thong and sex toy were taken into uh, custody by police. When well, Walmart spells, sells sex toys. They left. They went to another store. Oh, okay. They got engaged at the Walmart. Engagement ring at Walmart <laughs> for twenty nine sixty two. Why? Why is that relevant? I, Walmart sells engagement rings. Why you gotta point out how much it costs? That's rude. Well, well, wait, wait, wait. Walmart sells engagement rings. Well, I think some of them have a jewelry department that would, logically speaking, have rings. <laughs> like, technically, my engagement ring is not an engagement ring. Like, we didn't get it from the engagement ring section of the jewelry store because I didn't like any of those. It's just a ring that happens to be a diamond. Like... Uh, Cornelius then asked an employee to read a proposal note over the store's loudspeaker asking for his girlfriend's hand in marriage. I guess that's kind of sweet, maybe? Yeah. Sort of. After their big announcement, the newly engaged couple made their way to the Bay City Mall where employees at a Spencer's gift store... Suspected is. them of shoplifting and called police. And, you know, Spencer's has changed their policies then. Because when I worked at Spencer's, where, yeah, the sex toys were our top theft item. Like, I can't even tell you how much, whatever. We were basically not allowed to do anything. Like, our loss prevention policy was basically let them take it. <laughs> So I knew people that worked at the FYE in that mall. And what they would do is they would come to the Spencer's and steal a vibrator and then go to the FYE to steal the batteries for the vibrator. Well, FYE was actually allowed to approach shoplifters. So I would inevitably, I was the Sunday supervisor. I would get a call on Sunday. We have someone here with your merchandise. Would you like to prosecute? And I'm like, you know, I can't prosecute. Just send somebody back with a stupid vibrator. Like... So that surprises me none, not at all, except that they called the police because usually, at least when I worked there, which admittedly was a long time ago, you couldn't do anything about it. Oh, it gets better. She the didn't... quality of sex toys at Spencer's has gone up considerably since I worked there, though. Uh, Moore denied stealing anything, but police say she had a pair of gold earrings and a silver necklace with a star pendant that was taken from Walmart. Later, officers found Cornelius sleeping in the mall's food court. Oh, so they went straight to the honeymoon. <laughs> they went to a party up at the mall. This is just like whenever these people go anywhere, the sound of banjos follows them. I'm a little annoyed that the story had to point out the price of the engagement ring that's tacky <laughs> this is what you focus on it's rude this is what's <laughs> because it feels it feels like punching down like yeah these people are fucking trashy as hell and it was only a 30 dollar engagement ring ha, ha, ha. like is that necessary we know they're trashy as hell they stole a bunch of shit from the mall and fell asleep in the food court you, you don't need you don't need to keep ringing that bell we know okay well um more reportedly admitted to police the items she had were indeed stolen but insisted she wasn't responsible eventually pointing the finger at her newly minted fiance nice and they turned on each other immediately. Immediately!
Lady Disquette, it's a nice day for a white trash wedding. Oh. Oh. I'm also a little offended that you thought of Dan and me. If I was going to steal sex toys, I think you know well enough that I would not steal them from Spencer's. Yeah. Yeah. Like, while I will say the quality has gone up since I worked there, I have enough fucking PTSD from that job. <laughs> that's not where I'm buying or shoplifting. You see the sight of one of those electrical balls. The smell of the place. It's the smell of all the <clears throat> latex from Halloween masks and bad sex toys. Like, there's a very specific fart-like latex smell <clears throat> of expensive gifts. Somebody walks by with one of those canes with the horns on it and says over 40 on it. And then you there's a red haze. And when you wake up, there's blood everywhere. It's, it's the box. Do you remember the little crate, the box? Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can you get me out of here? Yeah. Fuck that thing. We kept it on the register. And I'm telling you, 62 people a day would press that button. And you wanted to kill yourself. And the worst part was, I went home to visit my mom at one point, And she was like, Tara, you work at Spencer's. I saw this thing. And I, and I need to know if you can get it from me. And she describes that box. And I'm like... You're kidding me, right? Like, do you understand how much annoyance that box has caused me? And I had to buy it for her. And she loved that stupid thing. And when both my parents passed away, I threw it away with glee. <laughs> it was still there. <laughs> years later, she still had that stupid thing. And I was like, bam, right in the trash that goes. I hate it. Oh, so, so what have we learned? Well, we've learned if you're going to report on this sort of thing, don't. Don't report the price of the ring. That's just tacky. It is tacky. You don't ask how much somebody's engagement ring cost, and you certainly don't talk about it in the news. We've learned yet again, gas plus fire equals boom, which, yep. why are you learning this from us? Who hasn't been teaching you things? <laughs> Someone is responsible. We've learned all you need to rob a Walmart is a blue vest. Yeah. No guns. No, no. The comforting knowledge that nobody there gives a single chicken fried fuck. No. <laughs> I have. That is great. That I is that from you. You cut that from me. Yeah. It's in one of your videos. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's true. I'm going to see now. We've learned that punching people in the face is not how we settle, how you get your way anymore. That doesn't work anymore. No. That is a bad thing. You were not a monkey. Do not do that. We've learned that before you shove an animal in your pants, you should find out venomous or squeezing. You should find out in what way it's going to destroy your genitals. <laughs> And just figure out if you're okay with that. Or if you're into it. And finally this week, we, we've learned that even tar now Target, with our economic recovery, that means Target is the new place for what was once the Walmart story. But then again, we're getting engaged at the Walmart, so... Uh... Who knows? 